I'd been out all day looking for her because I figured she'd gone to Don. I went to Don Osborne's house. I went to, my dad always called them the usual suspects, but I went to all these places that she might have spent the night or, you know, got caught up in something and I couldn't find her. So it was about 3.30 when I came back and my dad was at the kitchen table, pattern a hornet, writing stuff down and said, did you talk to this one? And we were trying to together try to figure this out. So by nightfall, we got frantic. We tried to make it work in a scheme where she was still alive. Do you know what I mean? You want answers that are comforting. So it can't be that she's dead. That can't be the answer. But I remember them taking me down and I had to identify the body and the jewel. they had the jewelry in a bag. And then you had the physical, you had to go down. We went to this really dark place and my dad just sat there. You could tell, I mean, it wasn't pretty, but it was pretty obvious. And then he kept saying, no, no, it isn't, you know? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is, you know? Yeah. You knew he was in this agony, but one, he wasn't gonna show it to me. And two, he's a man, men don't do that, so. And then people ask him lots of questions. And to who they, who they were, I don't know. We weren't supposed to talk to anybody who wasn't in a police uniform or in a suit. You didn't talk to reporters, you didn't talk to strangers, you didn't talk to anybody. And that was the, my father looked at me in the eye and said, don't talk to anybody unless they're official or a cop. Then it was just confusion in my brain right at that point until the actual funeral. That's the next thing I physically remember from this just almost like a bad movie, you know, everything.